just take a moment to settle in our seats and let's concentrate on our, our hearts. The hearts that Father, Mother, God fills with love and expects us to send out to others. Even to those we might find unlovable. Even to those that we might be putting conditions on. But remember that when we send out love to everyone, the love's going to come back, right back, to us. What joy we can have when we feel the love of others, when we walk into a place such as this wonderful center, and we are embraced by all these beautiful people who express their love so easily. The hugs and the pats and the smiles, they touch us in a way that we experience individually and collectively. We allow ourselves to feel this love for ourselves, for our country, for the world. And we also send this love to areas that are in, in unrest at this time. We send out the love to those who have done harm to others or who are contemplating doing harm to others. And this love can soften hearts, can change minds, can change directions. so grateful for the love that we receive, not only from all of our loved ones and friends and family and our pets, but we are so grateful for the love that we receive from Father and Mother God that is a part of us, but it also surrounds us and it protects us, and we are grateful. So we take a deep breath and breathe in the love and the comfort. And we breathe out anything that's not serving us today. And we open our hearts and our minds and we are receptive to the message that David will deliver, to the music that we sing, and to the beauty that we find in this place. And for sweet Jordan, who makes baby sounds that none of us can imitate, but that touch our hearts. And we are grateful. And we come back to this time and place, feeling the love and the comfort, and knowing that guidance is always available for us. And again, we are grateful. I don't walk by sight, but by faith it says. That's right. You can't walk by sight these days. You really got to have that that part of your consciousness that is in the higher atmosphere of itself that always remembers that we're created whole and perfect beings. Feed that. Feed that. And so energetics to all our practitioners, so energetics, complete philosophy. If you want to call it that, is that we want to work with the wholeness in each person, not just the brokenness of each person. Again, I say to you that what we think about, what we talk about, how we react to things, is a transference of power to it. So let's begin to focus on something really good. I would like to take, uh, before I get into the message this morning, to take just a few seconds uh, of silence honoring those. Yes. 
who were horribly murdered at the Tree of Life synagogue in Pittsburgh. It's so sad that this continues to escalate and to escalate. But I just believe like a, an old star, it will eventually collapse on itself, the heaviness of itself. And I think that this is going to reach a point uh, where it's going to implode upon itself and we're going to see uh, a new light emerge through this time. Uh, without that, I don't know. I don't know what anything would be worth if we lose our vision and our faith and our ability to see uh, and to trust this whole idea that uh, we serve an intelligence out there that knows exactly what's going on, what needs to be done, and how it's to be done. And we just uh, yield ourselves to that. So let's just take a few seconds to honor the, the people that were uh, uh, not only killed, but the families of those who were killed and those who are suffering and trying to recover.
if you're into a bad relationship, you don't want a bad relationship again. You want a different kind of relationship. You don't want to repeat that pattern again. So to be conscious of that is a very important part of being spiritual. Being spiritual, religion still uh, pretty much leans on its dogmas, doctrines, and those who are in positions of leadership uh, for their guidance. When you move into become a spiritual rather than a religious person, you begin to take responsibility for your life. I was telling the class over there that one of the great challenges of trying to have a community of uh, spiritual people, new thought people, metaphysical type people, is the balance between trying to keep your power individually and trying to be a part of something bigger than you and not lose that power. So that's a challenge that we all have before us as we begin to become the community that we are going to become is in the fact of keeping the fact that we're individually all following our own path, but at the same time there's something that can join us together that in common that is bigger than us as an individual. So taking responsibilities for our life by developing our intuition, our guidance, uh, and realize that we can't always be running to other people for answers. And I know if you're in a position where you're just so emotionally knocked out consciously, it's good to go seek those who have developed their talents and their gifts to help us along. Um, but we should not rely on people. And we who are working with people should be empowering people to let them know that what we're doing is awakening that which is within yourself. Somebody said, well, if I do that, then I won't have any clients. <laughs> You know, and I've heard that to myself many, many times. I've had some pretty good groups through the years, but I keep empowering them until they finally find out I don't need him. <laughs> so, uh, but that's me. I, I, I believe in empowering anything that we do to empower the people that we work with and to awaken their own capacities and abilities within themselves without making them become dependent on me. And uh, there's about seven billion people in the, uh, uh, people in the world. So it's not that you're going to run out of people. There's always people to take the place of the other person if, if uh, they do that. So we need places in which to come and to develop uh, this ability to be more responsible for our, our life. You need the value of genuine relationships. There's a place in the, that says, and I quote, uh, a friend sticketh closer than a brother. And I so appreciate uh, the spiritual extended family, many times versus my blood family. Um, I come from a family of a lot of uh, preachers and ministers, but the bills who did not have, have not spoken to me. Most of them are passed on now and never spoken to me uh, for 40, 50 years because of the direction that I took out of the family tribal religion uh, did not set well uh, with, with them. And I have been so blessed to have such wonderful spiritual extended families that I felt so close with. And uh, I think that's very important that we realize to cherish the relationships and friendships of our life that uh, are there to empower us and give us space of non-judgment in places that we can really do the work that we need to do. You know, there needs to be more than material possessions. I hope that we're in a place to become spiritual enough to realize that the answers that we're looking for is not in things outside of ourselves. And I'm not against things outside of ourselves, but all of you know, to, even when you attain something that you really think you want, it's not going to feel that certain yearning that is in your soul. It's just not going to do it. So there should be a shift that is going on within us to understand that the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but it's peace and joy and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. Isn't that a great scripture? The kingdom of God is not meat or drink, tangible material, but it is the inner peace and joy. So I don't care what your status may be uh, materially, uh, that doesn't mean you can't have joy, you cannot have inner peace that is within you, that is innately our inheritance that has been given from creator to the creation. Don't let little, little things bother you. Well, that's a big one, isn't it? Some of the things that we can magnify and make so big in our lives is just not necessarily if we'll learn to be more the observer and to step outside of our own feelings and our own emotions. These are the things that just knocks us out spiritually, consciously, uh, is when we get into a situation that we, we magnify to be so important. How many things could you think about right now that at one time was 
it's so tragic and so earth changing and you thought it was going to be maybe the very end of something in your life and you look back and you go, oh, that wasn't at all anything that I really <laughs> thought it was. And that's what the ego wants to do. It wants to yes. magnify things in our life and make them uh, seem much larger than they actually are. Don't let pride get in the way of asking questions. I think uh, it's important uh, that we are able to have a communication. In fact, I would like to see that here. I don't know when, uh, when people would do it, but I would like to see more of the time of sitting around in a circle and, and uh, being able to all of us participate into some kind of a conversation uh, of what's going on in the world. So it's not one-sided and you're only hearing from this platform up here and we're not hearing from you back there. And by the way, thank you for all you that did the, the uh, surveys. Uh, I appreciate it. I really appreciate taking the time to do that. Adam. Please do. If you will, we'll still take them if you would. But it really did give me uh, a good uh, way of knowing a little bit what you're thinking about and what you uh, are considering at this time uh, for things like that. So I appreciate it. By the way, how many of you voted? Please do. Please do. Please do. You know that life is about balance. I do believe that. We need to stay away from the extremities of life. It's not an all this or an all that. It's not a black and white world anymore. There are so many shades uh, that have opened up in consciousness uh, that we need to to uh, integrate into our consciousness. Uh, my example always is, uh, I got tired of being asked if I was a creation, if I was creation or evolution, and I made up a word called evolu uh, creation. Yeah. I put them together, that's balanced to me. I found a balance between evolution and creation, because that's divided people for so long. So take those things that have divided us and put them together into a, a center and a balance uh, that is within yourself. I think that's very important. Balance also represents uh, alignment. We have to align our thinking and our, our minds with our higher feelings, our higher desires, our higher purposes. When all that begins to come together, it begins to open a floodgate of a, of a river that flows in our life. Life should be more of a flow. It should be moving us along. And I always think that if you're going in the right direction, things have a more flow to it. You, you're in the right place at the right time. You meet the right person at the right time. Things just fall in place. And of course, that's my vision and desire for this whole uh, adventure that we're on, that we find the flow to it somewhere and we don't push the river. I was so blessed to uh, know Maggie Sanders, the only daughter of Colonel Sanders, the chicken. She used to come to my meetings in West Palm Beach, Florida. She was the most interesting person. She was in her 80s. And the other thing about Maggie is she wouldn't stop playing with my leg in the back seat of the car. She loved men. <laughs> <laughs> but she was very metaphysical and she was a follower and supporter of Joel Goldsmith uh, around the world. And you go to her house and she had pictures of framed uh, letters from Einstein and people all over the world. And she just told me the greatest things about this whole chicken thing and how it happened and, and this, that, and another. And she has a great book out called 11 Ingredients and One Spicy Daughter. But <laughs> 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 what I'm saying to that is she just said to me one day, and it's just so simple, but it's just profound. She says, David, just remember, don't push the river. Don't push the river. And I remind me, uh, myself of that all the time to not overly try to control situations, to be there and to try to stay in the flow of how things want to unfold itself. Mm -hmm. So in everything in our life, we need to try and find the balance between these extremities that wants to kind of knock us out a little, a little bit. You're grateful for what you do have. I think that is so important. It is so easy for me to go to bed or to to get my chair or whatever and start feeling everything that hurts. <laughs> I'm immediately drawn, if, a, if it's a back ache or a leg ache or a shoulder or a neck ache, that is wanting my attention. But the times 
that you just stop and you think the parts of your body that doesn't hurt, you know, and organs that's not uh, affected in some way with disease or pain like that. Be grateful for those aspects of your life that you don't give much attention to unless they start screaming at you with some kind of pain or a sickness or something like that. We tend to be more focused uh, on those areas of our life. Um, so, the old saying is, you know, the, the whole thing of the gratefulness is, is to have an attitude of gratefulness every day. Tim's very big on that. He's very big every day to start his day out with uh, gratitude. And uh, there's something you can always find to be grateful for. Yes. Always, always there's those things in your life to be grateful for not to immediately start out the day with what I'm not grateful for, what is wrong today, what hurts today. It's where we focus our consciousness and our, our attention. Uh, you've picked yourself up after challenges is the ninth sign that you are spiritual, that you're able to realize how that maybe things don't last as long. As, in the heart math, it's called resilience. The ability to not feel that depression as long, to not feel that anger or that worry as long as you usually do, but you start noticing that things are getting shorter and shorter as they dissipate in the feeding of more enlightenment and more uh, spiritual qualities on yourself. So feed the things that are so good. And even in each other, you know, it's easy for us to pick up the things we don't like about a person, and all of a sudden that becomes that person. I've always found that interesting. I think that prisons are filled with probably pretty good people who did some really bad things. But because something happened and you did something, you become that. Someone who killed becomes the killer. Somebody who stole becomes the thief. And that's not who we are all the time. People aren't doing that constantly. Those who do, that's a different issue. But somebody that was in a situation that was not even a part of their nature, but just a moment in where they unconsciously reacted to a situation but have to bear that as a title and be natured that for the rest of their life just doesn't seem fair to me. I really think uh, and appreciate those who are uh, working in that passion of uh, the United States being those who incarcerated the most people in our jails that probably don't need to be there, that can be rehabilitated, that are being rehabilitated different ways like that. I think that is certainly something uh, that we need to to look up. So how many of you have become aware that you're able to meditate more, get into a positive uh, class somewhere, or do something that can bring you out quicker of not being imprisoned into those lower aspects of your, of your mind and of your psyche? Uh, I just think that's important to realize that this is subtle. I think we all want some magic. We want somebody to have the, the right thing, the right technique, the right uh, procedure or whatever that takes care of everything right then and there. But I think the things that work on a spiritual level are more subtle. I think they're things that you just begin to notice a little difference in, a little difference in as it begins to dissipate the negative aspects of our life. So. Notice these things, if you haven't, uh, of how that you are being more conscious quicker, being the observer outside of the situation and looking at it from a completely different way. This is a sign that you are a more spiritual rather than a, just a religious person. You've made progress in areas of your life. You may not be the best at a specific skill, but you're trying to be your best. You've made improvements. That's important. Don't spend time comparing yourself to others. We need to move from, comp uh, from being competitive to cooperative. And we need to do that here. We need to be in a state of cooperation with each other. Um, and I think that's uh, an important uh, aspect. You are your own unique person with your own unique skills and talents. So. If you think like, oh, I'm not doing much, uh, I'm not sure what I need to do, sometimes it's good just to reflect back from where you come from to where you are now. 
you know, how do you, how do you grow uh, in the sense of, of what you've learned and what you've experienced? How are you seeing the world a little differently than maybe you saw it uh, at another time in your life? And these are, the, these are the real challenges. Faith itself is being challenged. Absolutely. People who, uh, it was easier a few years ago to talk about how bad things were because they weren't that bad. Especially in your world. It was all them. You know, we saw it on television, it was how bad it was in other countries and things like that. But it hadn't hit home yet. Today, I don't think there's anywhere to hide. There's nowhere to, to run. But we have got to realize that this thing is so global and so everywhere that we need to arise into a different consciousness and a different way of putting all of this together. And I think that we all should encourage each other and ourselves that we have progressed to the state in which we were in, that we could even entertain the idea that what is going on has any spiritual connection, transformation, and stuff. Just to entertain that idea. Now, I know you'll leave here and you'll probably hear something on the radio or, or calling, uh, news or something, and it'll knock you back out, and here you'll go again. Uh, with the old talk and how bad it is, and you can't stand this one, you can't stand that one. And that if you do, catch yourself. Be conscious in that moment. Observe and say, wait a minute, what am I feeding in this moment? How am I using? How am I investing my energy? How am I investing my power into, into something today? How do I want to invest it? Every day is an opportunity to invest your, your energy and your life into what you choose uh, to, to do. So I think we just need to be reminded we've probably made more progress than we even believe that we have uh, in our life. The thing is that I've learned that the more you learn, the more you don't know. <laughs> And that's been my life because I'm a real, uh, I guess, Gnostic in the sense that uh, I like knowledge. I like learning every day. I'm reading and learning something and whatever. And it, it gets overwhelming sometimes to, to do that. But I want to, uh, to find what is the, the, the knowledge that is the closest and resonates to the innate truth that is inside uh, of myself. Um, you add meaning to the people in your life. Add meaning to people. Sometimes when we're feeling down about life and all the goals we haven't achieved, we might forget the impact that we have on other people's lives. You may not have the career that you want or achieve the goals that you pl uh, have planned, yet you are making people smile, you're making them laugh. How wonderful. We were so blessed. Last weekend we was in Hot Springs, Arkansas. And saw old friends, and uh, we just laughed. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just have to get away from the everyday life that you find yourself in, and get with people uh, at a different level, in which you're not talking about bringing down that part of your life, but lifting up another aspect of your life. And we need, we need maybe more fun. Maybe we need to laugh just a little bit more. Uh, it's, it's a medicine, they tell me. It's laughter some way. And finally, we striving to become a better person. Life is a learning curve. We don't need to be perfect. We don't need to live free from mistakes. If you are determined to improve yourself and to become better, then you are already halfway there. Well, now that is an interesting statement that I want to uh, just been a minute or two on. I am always taught by faith that I'm created whole and perfect now. This out here that I'm observing through my five senses is where the imperfections are. It is where the, the needs basically are. But I'm not sure that that does not make what's happening out here any more or less perfect than than anything else. I think we need to understand that we're here for these lessons. We're here for these challenges. This is the place of growth. When I go to the gym, I'm looking for resistance, right? What good we go to the gym and not want 
uh, uh, any machine that had no resistance to it. I think I'm going to work on a machine now that has no weights on it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, feel the muscles. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm putting that down to 10, 20 pounds, and ooh, it, it hurts for a while. It's not pleasant, but I know that's how to get. The muscle is to use the resistance. If I don't use the resistance, the resistance is going to use me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Okay. So use these times in your life to grow bigger spiritual muscles in your life, mm -hmm. to grow your faith and your vision, and to learn the resilience, uh, which comes from your heart, not your head. Your head will go on and on and on and analyze and give you every reason why. And you just, you, you'll just get on that, that, that constant uh, path that goes nowhere. Yeah, and the heart has a different way and a different intelligence to give us that makes us go, well, I don't see it, but I know that's right. I just know that's right in my heart. I know that this is given to me for my growth to bring my passion and compassion. I don't know if people have attained the compassion that I think we need to uh, to deal with in these times that we're living in. I don't feel much compassion out there about anything. People are ready to tell you what's wrong. The people are angry. Uh, just driving down 77, you, you can tell these anger, angry drivers that get up behind you like, who do you think you are? Get out of my way. I mean, that whole thing is just everywhere, and, and we're not, we're losing touch, we're losing face with each other, and I think that that's something we should look at in some way. So the point is, you're more spiritual maybe than you think you are. Spiritual is not just attaining to something so that you can be spiritual. Spiritual is your true nature, your true character that you were created with and to be today. So as you leave here today, what I would offer you is to experience the circumstances and events of your life as a more spiritual being. This will draw people. If you uh, keep acting and reacting to other people, if people act angry and you react angry, then they act angry, and it accelerates into God knows what these days. I mean, there's so many guns around, you don't know who's got a gun and just... Uh, Take care of you right then and there. So, but if we learn to not give in to that, but to have the wisdom, and it takes wisdom to, to be able to deal with people these days. How would you deal with somebody that you uh, found yourself in a confrontation with? I think that's something you need to think about, meditate on, is how would I handle that as a spiritual person? And, and Kind of play it over in your head because in this world we don't know what we might uh, run into around the next corner in any way. So, that's spirituality. Spirituality begins with the question, religion begins with the answer. They've got all the answers for you. God is this, Jesus is that, salvation is this. You start in the mystical trail, it's about the unknown God. We're all still trying to figure out this God thing. Come on, let's be honest. And I don't know if we ever will figure out something that is so vast and infinite as that that we call God. The best way we can know God is that portion that's been given to us as a part of us. And that's why I accept this idea of the great teachers and prophets uh, of themselves that manifested the sacred in themselves, in the human experience. Because that tells us we too can experience the sacred in our own human experience today. So quit looking for some God out there to keep pulling you out of the ditch and whatever and realize that you have great wisdom, direction, and understanding in your life in any situation if you just will stay mindful. Buddha mindful, they call it. I think that's the great key to all of us, is mindfulness. So let's just take a moment. Right, Holy Spirit, we thank you for the words of
today and we're thankful for those who have gathered themselves here. Let us take something that we came to receive today in this message into our lives, not only this week, but always. A more way of being conscious and aware of how to step away from the deep emotional things that knock us out spiritually and consciously to react, but a way in which that we can be the availability of love and light into the world to extend itself into the lives and events of those that we are assigned to. We ask it in the wonderful name of the divine Christ presence of love that dwells in each.